E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles. Your Philadelphia Eagles are 5-0, and oh, Eagles fans. Welcome <laughs> back to another edition of Football 24-7. I'm your guy, Tony DeShields II, and I'm joined by none other than our Eagles insider, John McMullen. You guys already know he gives us some of the best insight when it comes to your Philadelphia Eagles. So make sure you guys always stay tuned to him on Football 24-7, and also make sure you guys, make sure you guys check him out on Birds 365 with his partner in crime, Jody Mack. Smash that like button. Make sure you guys are always engaged and subscribed to the Jacob Sports YouTube channel. John, my friend, you made it back from the West Coast in one piece and with yeah. your sanity intact, man. Did you get some rest? That's always a positive, although maybe not for some. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a long flight, but uh, yes, it it, is. no delays as best as it could be. So can't complain. Absolutely, man. Uh, as I always say, I appreciate you for always uh, taking time out. I'll admit, I tried to finesse you yesterday. I tried to see if I can get you on uh, on football twenty four seven yesterday, but uh, I I think I overshot my mark. Underestimated how long your flight would take. Yeah, that uh, that's five and a five and a half coming back. It's six going out. You get the tailwind coming back. So, but five and a half on a plane. Oof. Yeah, it's tough for sure. So. You know, let's talk about it, right? These Philadelphia Eagles, they're five and zero now. They ended up beating the uh, they ended up beating the Los Angeles Rams on the road at SoFi, twenty three to fourteen. Man, it was a it was a very interesting game because that first half, it seemed like things were about to get out of hand for the Philadelphia Eagles in terms of that pass defense and Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup. They looked like they were starting to heat up, and then all of a sudden, the second half, they kind of flipped the switch. It was a tail two halves defensively. So, you know, walk us through. You know, the vibes that were going on in SoFi. Walk us through the things you saw in that game. Just just give us a general overview, a general uh, synopsis of the overall feeling and <laughs> observations uh, from that game on Sunday. Yeah, watching the first half, I thought the Eagles were not in, in a little bit of trouble um, because of how uh, Cooper Cup was playing in the first half. He hit the ground running. They were throwing the kitchen sink at him, and they couldn't do anything to stop him. Um, and then for whatever reason, Sean McVay went away from it, which I didn't understand that much. Uh, they were dominating. Both teams were dominating on third downs. So it was just a conversion party really quick first half because both teams were so successful offensively. Um, and then the second half, uh, Eagles kind of took over as they usually do. It's usually one of the fronts. And this time it was the defensive front. Uh, sort of dominating, um, speeding Matthew Stafford up. There were a couple plays in the in the second half where Cooper Cup was open deep, but Matthew Stafford just wasn't comfortable because of the pass rush. He threw one over his opposite shoulder, really bad throw. Uh, threw another one off off base, so to speak. Uh, and and Cooper had significant separation. But <clears throat> he was dominating in the slot in the first half and, you know, at will. And Sean just kind of went away from it. And that's one thing I had tremendous respect for um, Shane Steichen and Brian Johnson so far this year. When you're giving the Eagles something, they take it. They take it and they take it and they take it. And if you don't stop it, they keep going back to it. And I've talked about that takes a lot of discipline, believe it or not. I think Sean McVay kind of showed that because he didn't have the discipline to stick with something that was working. And, you, you know, sometimes you get in your head and say, well, they got to do something else. I got to do something else. And I'm of the mindset, take it, take it, take it, take it. And they just went away from it. So I think the Rams helped them. I think Bradley Roby helped. Um, Mario Goodrich. Eli Ricks, they threw, they just could not, and understandably so. I, I feel sorry for Goodrich in, in a sense because he got two opportunities. First one was against Justin Jefferson. Second one was against Cooper Cup. Yeah, and everybody that's not, thinks that's not fair. <laughs> yeah, everybody <laughs> thinks the guy stinks. And yeah, as you pointed, that's not fair. Um, but unfortunately, the Eagles need some roster spots. 
coming up, he might be one of the first to go. Um, it's a tough business. Um, but and Eli Ricks, first time he's played in the slot, so you can't really blame him. Uh, but the Eagles didn't want to have a, a big pitch count on on Bradley Roby, but I think moving forward, uh, he's going to be your your full time slot cornerback, and he knows how to play, so that'll be helpful. Yeah, it was really interesting how that game turned out because if you look at the score, you would think it was a lot closer than what it was, but then when you look at certain stat categories like the amount of plays the Philadelphia Eagles ran, uh, 78 plays to the Rams, 55 plays, uh, the Eagles' time of possession, 37 minutes and 55 seconds to the Rams, 22 and 5 seconds, uh, the Eagles' rushing yards, 159 to the Rams, 54, and then the total yardage, the Eagles' 454 to the Rams, 249. If you look at those four key categories, this score should be a lot more. The, the disparity between the scores should be much more drastic, but – Obviously, the Philadelphia Eagles, they've been struggling um, to put teams away, especially when it comes to the red zone. I believe they were about two for six. Um, yeah. What do you think went wrong in the red zone for the Philadelphia Eagles? Again, this score should not have been this close, but it was. What went wrong for the Philadelphia Eagles in red zone? I mean, you had a sky view of this thing. <clears throat> um, pretty much the entire season. Teams are taking away the, the quarterback run in the red zone, really focusing on that. And I think the Eagles have yet to adjust to it. That's pretty much the only thing I can complain about offensively. Um, you mentioned two of six. Nick said two of five after the game. The last oh, one. Oh, right, right. Yeah, trying, that, trying, okay. trying, to, I give that. trying to run out the clock. But either way. But it, it tells you something because they were in the red zone six times. The Rams were in the red zone once. So, but they were one for one. So again, we we've, we've talked about stats probably too much. You know, right. I got to talk about stats too much with Jody. <laughs> but you know, the Rams are a hundred percent. So if you, they're a hundred percent in the red zone, the Eagles are at thirty three percent. Which team would you rather be? The team that was in there six times, or the team that was in there once? Absolutely. Um, so long term, you know, that'll get thrown into the red zone stats and everyone will say oh, the Rams got a good percentage if they keep, you know, the, the Eagles don't, you know, doesn't necessarily matter, but what does matter <clears throat> is the Eagles haven't lived up to their standard in the red zone and teams are forcing them to do something else and they're not doing it. And one of the things that I don't get from the Eagles perspective is, you got A.J. Brown. You have um, Dallas Goddard. You know, constantly you see Jalen Hurts throw that go route to A.J. Brown down the sideline very successfully, but it's usually 30 to 40 yards. Why can't you throw it in the red zone? You know, you got a big body, use it. But for whatever reason – the Eagles put that in their back pocket. They don't use it in the red zone. Same thing with Dallas. You know, if you have a slot cornerback on Dallas Goddard, he's six five. Even if it's a safety, you got a big body, use it. And if you do that occasionally, you start having some success. All of a sudden, things will lighten up for the running game, and you can get back to what you want to do. But right now, they're just banging their head against the wall and everybody's condensed, and everybody's taking away the quarterback run game, and they're not they're not throwing the football, and they have to throw the football to sort of lighten that up, and they got to use their big bodies. It's a condensed space. Um, they got to use A.J. Brown. They got to use Dallas Goddard in the red zone. It's funny. You know, you mentioned how Brian Johnson and these guys, they've been doing, they've been doing very well in, in terms of taking what – the defense is giving them, right? And we're seeing that in between the 20s, from the 20-yard line to the other 20-yard line. We're seeing them taking what the opposing defense is, is giving them, right? Once they get in that red zone, though, we begin to see what they aren't giving. They're not giving the quarterback runs, like you said. They're bunched up in there. Uh, it's really condensed, right? We know what the defense isn't giving them, and that's the quarterback run. They cannot get it done right there. What our defense is giving them, what – what aren't the Philadelphia Eagles taking advantage of? I know you mentioned the big bodies, but on the opposing side of the ball, 
what are what, what are the defenses doing that the Philadelphia Eagles can take advantage of that you maybe have seen over the past five weeks? That's exactly it. I mean, you gotta you gotta go in a different direction. When somebody's zigging, you gotta zag. And if they're loading the box and if they're spying the quarterback, guess what? Especially in the condensed space, quarterback run game isn't gonna work. It hadn't worked, and it you know, teams have been doing it from 20 to 20 as well. Now it finally showed up in Los Angeles. They were able to get it going a little bit uh, 20 to 20. But teams have come into the season saying it was the exact opposite coming into 2022. They came into the season and said, Jalen Hurts is going to have to beat us. And he did. Um, They came into the 2023 season saying, Jalen Hurts isn't going to beat us. Somebody else has got to beat us. Um, And for the first four games, um, the Eagles were able to persevere, and now it starts. Things start lightening up a little bit in game number five. You know, the Rams, other than Aaron Donald, don't have a, a, a very talented defense, so that was part of it. Um, but the red zone stuff is still an issue because they're not. You know, they're they're not throwing the football in the red zone, and I can't explain why. You know, and when they, you know, then they get in second and long, third and long, then it becomes an issue. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it clearly was an issue for Jason Kelsey. It looked like he was frustrated with the way things have been going in the red zone. I mean, I've, well, I, I think, he, I think was, I've seen he, him. He, he was frustrated about the plays not coming in quickly enough. So that, that as well. Can, that could be a little bit of indecision. Yeah, I think it's in the Eagles' head a little bit. It's the one thing on offense they haven't been successful at. And they're usually um, used to being successful. Um, So I think, you know, it's the one thing they're probably um, a little bit concerned about. And Jason Kelsey's frustration kind of kind of showed that. I mean, it's self-inflicted at this point. Like you said, it's uh, it's really confusing when you have a team this talented. You have some big bodies on that side of the ball with A.J. Brown and Dallas Goddard. I mean, there's no one else who would rather throw it to in that situation. I'm pretty sure any other team in the NFL would love to throw the ball to those guys. Yet the Philadelphia Eagles aren't t- aren't really taking advantage of their personnel in that situation. And, um, you know, we talk about this all the time. The Philadelphia Eagles, they drill situation football all the time, training camp and even in OTAs. You know, they, they drill situation football all the time. Yet they're one of the worst teams in terms of red zone efficiency. I have a hard time understanding it. Uh, but I think you just kind of laid it out, right? They just keep banging their head against the same wall. Yeah, and when they do throw it, it's been stopped, you know, swing passes, you know, the bubble screen to Quez Watkins. Um, you know, it's not down the field. Um, so, you know, I think they'll make the adjustments. Um, you know, the, the interception uh, – which was a, a back shoulder attempt. I don't know if that was, that might've been just outside the 20. I don't remember, but yeah, yeah I think it was um, that, that, that was a back shoulder third throw where uh, Jalen and AJ weren't on the same page. Um, so there's been a bunch of different things. Um, but I, you know, when Brian Johnson talked today and he talked about execution, um, you know, but it's everything. I'm trying to look at it real quick. Other than the AJ throw, every pass is like underneath, you know, out, outside the swift, the bubble screen. Then it's Kenny Gainwell up the middle. Kenny Gainwell up the middle. Incomplete short right to, to the Devontae Smith. E- everything, it's like there's no shots other than – the AJ play, and that was just a miscommunication. And he can't get gun shy. You never want to turn the football over. Um, and 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 by the way, I you know the, the status of the game plays into it as well. If you're if you're comfortable and you don't have to push things, there's no real need to push things, you know. Mm. Um Jake Elliott field goal is going to do it. The Rams weren't um, in danger of, of pushing you. Um, 
late in the game. So you had, you know, let's see, 9.55 left, that drive. You had Jalen Hurts right, the quarterback run game, lost a yard. So then you're you're second and you're you're you were first and goal at the nine, then you're second and ten, and it's Kenny Gainwell off right right tackle for two yards. Then you're third and long, and it's Jalen Hurts running again, right tackle for no gain. You know, what is that? I, I, it's, it, it, it's frustrating for me. I mean, you know, watching the games. I see this team moving the ball up and down the field. They get in the red zone. All of a sudden, it seems like these guys forget how to call plays or they forget who they have on their roster. Well, but and, – and that's why I bring up the, the status of the game. The game was over by that point, essentially. So they're being conservative. But, right. you know. But, like, the first drive, right, they clearly entered it with a plan. <laughs> they, they they love to act like they don't have a plan when it comes to certain guys, but they clearly entered with one to get Dallas got her going. They did just that. Jalen Hurts found them in the found them in the end zone. They drove down the field, and that was that was literally a red zone situation, and they executed it perfectly. So, I, 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 again, they have. Well, they this- did get in twice, so yeah. I mean, when you get when you get six opportunities, um, you're not going to go over six in the modern NFL. But you know, two per six is not up to their standard. Two per five is not up to their standard. If you right. want to erase that last one, as Nick wanted to do, but whatever. I mean, they're their bottom. I haven't looked at this week's. They were 24th coming into um week five in red zone offense. It, it was basically the only major category where they weren't top 10 and 24, needless to say, with their offense is not is not acceptable. Yeah, you know, I want to I want to talk to you about that final drive of the first half. You know, that was that was pretty impressive by them. I mean, they caught some breaks with some penalties, but overall, I felt like that that offense pretty much executed executed the best way they possibly could, especially that pass uh, to AJ Brown, the one hander. I mean, this dude is a freak. I mean, it's like I'm watching this guy, and I'm like, how does he do the things that he does? And then you know. Uh, it, and then they get to the uh, the end zone, and of course the, the the brotherly shove. I mean, they had about thirty five seconds to get that ball down the field. And sure, the Rams gifted them some things, but man, Jalen Hurts played, in my opinion, his best game of the season. You know, is this a sign of many things to come when it comes to Jalen Hurts and his offense? Well, I mean, the offense is, is sometimes I think it's funny. You know, we're. Uh, Let's see. Second in the NFL, they are. Um, <laughs> I don't know what people want, but you can't get much better than second. They they had 400, 454 yards. Um, fourth consecutive game, they've been over 415. It's only the fifth time in, in franchise history they've done that, four consecutive times. Um as I said, they're they're second in rush offense, tenth in pass offense, fifth in points per game, second in third down offense. They were tremendous on third downs, and now they're twenty seventh in red zone offense. So that's the only thing, literally, that isn't clicking. Um, yeah, exactly. You know, I, I, if they get that figured out, then they're on. You know, they're on. They're on track. I mean, and again, like. You have a new offensive coordinator, and this is this is a a season long, you know, pro- progression, right? I mean, Jalen Hurts and Brian Johnson, yes, they have a relationship, but they're they're still trying to figure out the flow and what they and what what their expectations are from each other in various situations. I mean, um, again, the the bottom line is I think they are trending in the right direction, especially with the pass attack. Um, once they once they figure out the red zone situation, this team is. Especially offensively, they're going to be they're damn near unstoppable. Yeah, well, as unstoppable as you can get, and in, in the you know nobody's perfect. I, the standards are so high now. I was like, it, Nick Sirianni's twenty six and six since the two and five start as the head coach. Um, uh, there's a lot of nitpicking. 
I got it. What happens when you're great, John? This is what happens. Yeah, I I I got to do it because, and I I was telling Jody, I'm bored by this team because they're too good. (laughs) I'd prefer some issues, Um, but I yeah. I as far as the fan base, I I don't get some of the angst. I mean this this team is they're they're so good. (laughs) <laughs> I think I, I think uh, let me see if I can you know shed some light on it right in terms of the angst you know we see teams like the Niners who appear to be executing on all cylinders you see offenses like Miami right and the Eagle and the fans know they're going to have to face off against those teams at some point and they know nine times out of ten is probably going to be uh Eagles Niners in that NFC championship game again uh you know if everything goes according to plan um I think there's a sense of this team is not playing up to its full potential. And also, well, look what the Niners are doing. We, we, we got to keep up with that. What is what is the full potential? That's what I'm trying to say. What well, is the red the zone, right? The red zone is both below, below par, right? So they're not playing up to full potential, if you ask me. Um, uh, yeah, well, I, I don't know. I They're undefeated. Yes, I just gave that's you true. The num- I that's just true. gave you the numbers. Um, they they have the tenth ranked defense, so they're up to top ten now, which is that kind of even surprised me. Um, because I, to me, the biggest issue would be um the the not not even the secondary, just up the middle. So the safeties and pass coverage, the linebackers and the slot corner, that would be the biggest concern for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, there's the expectations like today, Jody, I don't want to pick on Jody, but he's complaining about Quez Watkins. Like, I mean, what, what, I mean, he's the third receiver. It's like, but but it's like, it's, 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 it's a, there, there are role players. I constantly say, but what happens when someone doesn't fill their role? Like, I mean, okay. You mentioned the bubble screen with Quez, right? Yeah, well, that's a bad play call. That's don't blame that on Quez. That's blame that John, on somebody. John, he had he, he, John Devontae and Olmeda. They, they they load some pretty good blocks. He had all he had to do was run through the alleyway, and he decided to bounce it outside. I mean, that was just poor. That was just poor by him. I mean, I hate bubble screens just as much as you. We talk about this all the time. Yeah. I can't stand bubble screens, but in that situation, the first it, what was it, third and one, third and two, if I'm not mistaken. I, I can't quite remember, but. I mean, third and two, third and two. All he has to do is fall forward damn near. But he, he bounced it outside and it turned it to be in a loss. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, I think I might be I think I might be with Jody on that one. Quest Watkins. Well, I, I, don't I, that, that, I don't think people understand the stinking role of the player. Like and, and I say this all the time. You can't have. A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith and Cooper Cup. Doesn't work. Right. You 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 can't have a star at every position. His job is to stretch the field, which Nick said clearly at his press conference, to make things easier for A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, to make the throws easier for Jalen Hurts. You take the 4-3-5 out of the lineup and turns into 4-6, it's not as easy. You can't create the same space. Spacing, it's it's same in basketball. Spacing is huge in football now, in the modern game. That's why he's out there. But now, spe- if A.J. Brown gets hurt, then it's a different conversation. Then you need production. And if people don't want him on the field in that category and they want Alameda Zacchaeus, I mean, neither of them is going to be replacing A.J. Brown. But maybe Alameda would be a better fit because you need actual production. But for this offense, it's more important to have the speed on the field. Look at the Miami Dolphins. But to your point point about spacing, right? To your metaphor about spacing and basketball, in order for spacing to work, you got to have a guy that can actually shoot the three ball. uh, You know, shoot shoot the three ball, right? I mean, Quez, what's what's the point of the spacing if he's not? This this is Jody's argument. This guy has a ninety-one yard reception. This guy has a fifty-three yard touchdown. This guy has a 
45 yard touch. Do people forget those plays? You can't I mean, just let them. I've heard that it's insanity. You want to get fired? Let any receiver, let any NFL receiver go because you don't think he's any good. And he runs behind the defense. Quickest way to get fired. The whole Eagles defense is what? Limiting explosive plays. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to get beat on this in this league is to get beat over the top. You have to account for Quez Watkins. He may not be good, but you have to account for him. And that opens up things for the playmakers. Would you like to have Cooper Cup as your third receiver? Sure. <laughs> this isn't fantasy world. Right, right. I, I, I get that, John. I get that. You know, I guess I just look at it as, you know, I haven't seen him stretch the field at one time this season. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just trying to understand his value if he's not doing that. Well, that, I mean, good, that, I mean, when he runs down the field, there's always, there's always route combinations. You know, his role is to clear out. His role is to clear out a safety, except when he's running a bubble screen, right. which is dumb which I will freely admit, that's what he's doing. You're clearing out a safety. You're opening up space for the playmakers, for the guys that are supposed to get the football. And by the way, we've already had, I had this conversation with B. John Robinson. I'm having it with DeAndre Hopkins. I'm like, I don't know what people want. You already can't get the ball to A.J. Brown. He's complaining. You can't get the ball to Dallas Goddard. He's not happy. Now, last week, you can't get the ball to Devontae Smith. But everybody wants another star. There's one football. That's it. I feel you. I, I understand. I understand. Yeah, I, you know, we may have to agree to disagree on Quez. I'm, I'm very down on Quez right now. Um, it's going to take a lot well, of Well, everybody to... is because they're <laughs> looking at production. That's not his role. It's like Zach Pascal last year. That's mm -hmm. what I explained. Zach Pat, what's Zach Pascal's role? Not mainly to catch the football. Mainly blocking. <laughs> yeah, he made one touchdown because Shane Steichen had a callback, and everybody's expecting Zach Pascal to block. And all of a sudden, he's downfield and he's catching a touchdown. But his main role was to block. And by the way, the Eagles would love to have Zach Pascal back because they don't have that role player right now. Right. If they lose uh, Quez Watkins, now Jody brought up Devin Allen. He's not ready to play, but you, you want somebody with that kind of speed to stretch the field for Devontae and AJ. But, you know, people don't care about role players because it's intangible. It's what I said to Jody. I shook it. It's not on the stat sheet. Brian Johnson used the word today. Intangible. But that that's the nature and 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 people don't like intangible because you can't put a number on it yeah i, I, I totally get it me for one i do love intangibles jalen hurts is the king of intangibles uh you know let's you know let, let, let's jump to the other side of the ball um i want to get in the trenches man jalen carter hassan reddick man home run hitters slammed the door shut on that game those guys were just tremendous you know, let's start with the rookie. Like this guy, Jalen Carter, he had the opportunity to have more snaps today because, you know, have more snaps on Sunday because Fletcher Cox was out with an injury. On top of that, Marlon Tu Pelo Tu was out as well. So, they, so they were two men, uh, two men shy of a full deck, and they still managed to do their thing. Jalen Carter just turned up the heat. Meanwhile, a guy like Aaron Donald on the other side couldn't get past Sewell Opeta. Man, you know what? What, you know, what, were, what were your thoughts and instant reactions to Jalen Carter's impact on this game? And then now you got to get me to see now that you know. If if you guys if John, you if, said you were bored. You said you were bored, didn't you? You said you, you were bored. Go, I'm, you, I'm trying to entertain go. you. The Eagles slid protection almost every play at Aaron Donald, and Brian Johnson was also talking about um, Kenny Gainwell today because people are down on Kenny Gainwell, but he's their best blocking back, and he was there to chip as well. So a lot of times they had three blockers on Aaron Donald. The rest of the Rams defense is so stinking pathetic, they couldn't take advantage of that. So it was a good game plan from the Eagles. But I don't want to take away from Jalen. Jalen Carter is amazing. Amazing. 
But Sue Opetta did not take care of Aaron Donald. Sue Opetta <laughs> and the village took care of Aaron Donald. They say it takes, did, the it takes and, the village. It takes the village. And and the Eagles did a tremendous job. But if they left Sue, and that's that's not an insult to Sue. If they left him on an island, it would have been ugly. The Eagles luckily aren't that dumb. Um but so they had a great game plan for Aaron Donald. I knew that coming in. Nick had said everything's about 99 first, 99, 99. Um, and the Eagles did a tremendous job. And that's what players like that do. Um, you got to spend so much time accounting for them. The beauty of the Eagles is, and you saw Chandler Carter had his own, um, they were double teaming him at the end. Um, and he was he, beating he, double he, teams. He, yeah, he bowled those two guys. That, that blew my mind. Yeah. He was beating double teams. And it doesn't matter because somebody else is going to beat you. You can't – like you can you can use three people to block Aaron Donald and the Rams couldn't do anything about it because nobody else can beat their man. Occasionally that um, – I forget his name. Uh, Young uh, was pretty good. And at times he he got some uh, penetration, um, but that was it. With the Eagles, you got Reddick, you got Sweat, you got Jordan Davis, you got uh, Milt Williams. You usually have Fletcher Cox. You got Brandon Graham, obviously. On and on and on and on. So if you sim if you implement a similar game plan against Jalen Carter. And you you're using three players to block them, you're going to get killed by somebody else. That's the beauty of the Eagles' defense. But um, Jalen Carter, the best thing I can say about Jalen Carter is the Eagles lost a 21 million dollar defensive tackle in free agency, and nobody cares. And by the way, he's playing up to his contract in San Francisco, and nobody cares because. Carter's better. He's better. Yeah, he plays the run significantly. As a better. rookie and a Spurs, he's a better pass rusher. He's a better player. Wow. He's a better player, and he's only getting better five games. He's only going to get better, but he's not Aaron Donald. He didn't outplay Aaron Donald. Um, that's crazy. That Another thing that drives me crazy, Jalen Carter – is playing against the Rams offensive line. Of course. Aaron of course. Donald's playing against the Eagles offensive line. It's not a vacuum. It's not a, it, 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 it's Aaron, but Aaron Donald's one of the greatest defensive players of all time. Anybody who watches my show, watches this show, knows how much I love Jalen Carter. They should. I've been talking about him. He's, he's phenomenal. Don't jump that. Don't skip steps. He's not Aaron Donald, but he's really good. Very good, and that's and that's really all you can ask for at this point in the season. Um, you know, John, I want to uh, I want to get into, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you know, the, some emotions were flaring on the you know on the sideline, and you know, obviously Kelsey was upset about the plays getting in late, and the Eagles haven't been that efficient um, in the red zone. Um, this schedule is only going to get harder. And I think some of those emotions were flaring, obviously frustration in game. But I think I think they collectively understand that this thing is only going to get harder and we need to make sure we make we need to make sure we're as detail oriented and as buttoned up as we possibly can be. You know, with all these. Well, with with the issues that the Eagles do have right in pass defense, you know, in red zone offense. Right. You know, how confident are you? that this team can get those specific issues figured out in time for, let's say, the Dolphins matchup, where they're really going to be tested on the perimeter? Um, I, I don't think – I mean, there are tough matchups in the world. I, I think, you know, that's going to be about uh, the pass rush, as it usually is um, with the Eagles. Um, and, and, and the Dolphins don't – have a great offensive line. So it's a huge advantage um, for the Eagles. That's where they have to win games on defense. They know that. Um, there's some weaknesses that I talked about in the, really up the middle of the field. 
And when you're talking about Slay and, and Bradbury, they're great, but <clears throat> Tyree Kill is going to beat anybody and everybody. I mean, it's similar to, you know, you game plan, you'll zone it up. Um, but they have Jalen Waddle as well, if he's healthy by that point. They they have playmakers all now. Uh, the running back got hurt, so I got to see where he is in a couple weeks. But I think next gen stats had you talk about speed and what speed does. Um, they had the top seven in game speeds, all were Dolphins, <sighs> top seven in the entire league. I think David one, H. Han has like 22 miles per hour, right? Something like that. Tyree, I think Tyreek's the only one who cracked 22, but the top seven is. Dolphins. It's either Tyreek, A. Shane, or uh, Mostert, not even Waddle. Wow. So, um, you know, they got four guys who can run like Quez, um, but can also make plays <laughs> on top of it, uh, which Quez cannot do, which I would freely admit, um, or at least consistently. Uh, but yes, uh, I mean, but I'll tell you, man, Tua will turn the ball over if you pressure him and you get him off his first read, he will turn the ball over because that ball's coming out. So if he's not comfortable or if he's sped up, um, he he can turn it over. He's done a good job this year, but he had that one game last year that was really, really ugly, um, five or six picks. Um, I, I, I like that matchup for the Eagles because – there's really? no way Miami can can beat um, can can block the Eagles front. There's just no way. So um, that's where I say all the time. I said it again this morning. Teams don't build the right way, man. They do not build the right way. It's almost like fans are in charge of half the teams in this league because all they're doing. We're talking. Yeah, Miami's got great skill players. Where's the offensive line? Where's the defensive line? The Eagles win every single game, 26 and 6. Every single game, excluding Jalen Hurts, he's a big part of quarterback's a big part of it. But that's I hope people understood that's baked in. Because either their offensive line dominates or their defensive front dominates. Every single game. Yesterday I thought they were in trouble because of the the issues in the slot at halftime. I thought they were in deep trouble. Defensive front took that game over, took it over. Rams had 80 yards of offense after, after halftime. And people are like, oh, the slot, and, you know, Roby came in and did a, a good job in the slot. No. Jalen Carter, Hassan Reddick, Milt Williams, Josh Sweat, Jordan Davis. Matthew Stafford was getting out the ball in 2.2 seconds in the third quarter. He did not want to get the ball out that quick. If he has time to throw, I told you about those two plays down the field, the cup. Mm -hmm. If he has time to throw the football. Touchdowns. One would have been a touchdown. One would have been at least a 50-yard gain. Big, massive plays. He didn't have time to throw the ball. Um, defensive front won that game. And it's usually go back to week two, offensive line. Week three, offensive line. Yeah. You know, it's it's always one of the two groups dominating. Always. Can't argue with that, man. Um, final question before we get out of here. Um, this isn't necessarily Eagles related, but I think it can tie back into the Eagles. So humor me here. Uh, did you have an opportunity uh, to indulge in that 49ers Cowboys game over the weekend. And if so, please tell me what your instant reactions were when you saw how that thing played out. Did not see much of it uh, because, um, you know, we're working after the game. So true. Um, yeah, we go deep into So it was on in the background, but I didn't see much of it. Um, I'll eventually go back and watch it this week. Um, but obviously, San Francisco's playing very well. Um, and they've got more style points than the Eagles. Right. Um, but, you know, matching up. And we'll see the game in the regular season. 
Um, and that'll pr probably decide home field advantage. And that'll be a big part in, in a potential playoff matchup as well. Um, but I'll, I'll take the Eagles, you know, I'm, 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 I'm freely admitting I'm not as big a Brock Purdy fan and he's playing well. I, you know, he deserves a lot of credit, but if you're, if you're, and I hate to boil it down to quarterback, but they're both really good teams. If one has the best roster, the other one probably has the second best roster. Um, I mean, you can argue who's who's better, but the Eagles have a better offensive line, and they have a better defense front, and they have a better quarterback. Um, you know, it's very early. Injuries can play into it. Right. All this kind of stuff. Um, Trent Williams is probably if you lined up all their offensive linemen, Trent Williams is probably still number one of the entire group. That's one of the best left tackles of all time. Um, but overall, the Eagles group is better. Um, defensive front, same thing. They have some good players. They don't have the Eagles talent or depth. Now, you know, they have a Christian McCaffrey's the best running back in football. He can do everything. Debo Samuel, they're the best manufactured touch team. They can actually run bubble screens successfully. George Kittle's phenomenal. Fred Warner might be the best linebacker in football. They got a lot of talent, but the Eagles have a better offensive line and a better defensive front and a better quarterback. Yeah, you know what's interesting really quickly before we get out of here, John? You know, Brock Purdy has only been sacked eight times on the season. Granted, when you think about the teams they faced off against, um, Steelers, obviously they have Watt, but that but they're top heavy there. Rams have Donald. He's the only one there. He's the he's the last of the Mohicans. Uh Giants don't have a dominant uh pass rush at all. Cardinals, same thing. Cowboys, you know, they just took them to the woodshed. Brock Purdy has not truly been uh touched uh thus far throughout the season. And I think if based off their schedule and how it looks to me, the Philadelphia Eagles are going to be the best pass rush that they face all year. I think that's going to be the real test to see if Brock Purdy is legit because we saw what happened uh, when the last time when the last time Philadelphia Eagles were able to get hands and feet on them. Um, things didn't turn out too well, so I'm really curious to see how Brock Purdy handles uh, adversity because I think his situation is so ready-made. Uh, I'm not taking any, anything away from the throws he's making because he has to make the throws, right? But but he just he, he has so much time back there, and he's he's rarely – under duress i want to know how he responds when things aren't necessarily going his way when he has to uh, vibe and we even dodge those bullets so i think yeah that's, that's the one on. that I, and again i didn't see the game that's the one surprise because the cowboys do have a very good pass rush uh, right. top five pass rush so i don't know what went on in the game but obviously brock purdy had a tremendous game mm -hmm. um uh, obviously they were able to do some things. So you got to give them credit. Um, for sure. For it's, sure. Uh, but this is a week to week league and, you know, sure is. games have personalities. And if the snowball starts rolling downhill, um, sometimes thing, things go in a negative direction pretty quickly. That's another impressive thing about the Eagles. They tend not to have those games where everybody else, Everybody but Philadelphia and San Francisco has had one of those games. Um, the Eagles tend to persevere. The 49ers have had more style points. But you, you talk about some of the teams they played. Again, it's a small sample size. Um, they played the Giants, the Cardinals. Those might be might be the two least talented teams in the NFL. So how impressive is that five and zero? Oh? Now people will say, "Who who the 49ers play?" You just you just you just said, "Give me give me their opponents." Steelers, Rams, Giants, Cardinals, Cowboys. All right, I'm gonna look up real quick, and I know we got to go. I'll use PFF's overall rankings. Mm -hmm. Um. Steelers are all these teams outside of the Cowboys have an under 500 record as well. Steelers are 27th 
in the NFL, 27th overall of 32 teams. Arizona's 28. Giants are dead last, 32nd. And who else? Rams and Cowboys. Rams, 18. Cowboys are, are nine. So, you know, it's an impressive outing. Now, the Eagles haven't, you know, Patriots are 29th, and they struggled against them. The Commanders are 21st. Minnesota, shockingly, they just turn it over. They got their seventh overall and one and four, right <laughs> behind the Eagles, who are number the, the, six. The, the Vikings are, are a conundrum. Um, I, they, I just, know. they just turn it. They fumbled on their first two plays last week. First that, two that's offensive insane. plays. insane. That's yeah. insane. That when things are like that happening, I, 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 it makes me believe some, you know, someone, somebody put something in the Kool Aid. Someone spiked the Gatorade. Well, you yeah. know what happens? You start thinking about it, and it's a self fulfilling prophecy. So they've turned it over so much. Um, that's yeah, for sure derailed them. Um, and and the Rams are obviously uh, playing okay, but not a great team. So right. both of them have there. So I'm not saying the the Eagles have been great tampa bay's uh where's tampa um tampa's i can't find tampa i mean this is what happens when you're at the top right when you're the two best teams in the in the conference everyone else is yeah. everyone everyone else is 20 yeah well that's what people said the eagles didn't play anyone last year they they played nobody i said no the eagles turned somebody's into nobody's that's mm. what they've been doing that's sort of what San Francisco is doing. You know, the good teams in this league beat the teams they're supposed to. Thanks. Um, you know, we'll see. Eagles fans like to point out that they blew out uh, the 49ers. They blew out the 49ers because Brock Purdy got hurt yeah. um, and they didn't have a quarterback. So I wouldn't, I'm not going to stand here and say that's meaningful either because it's not. Um, but if you're just asking me at this early date to say who's better, I'm going to say the Eagles for exactly the reason. Better offensive line, better defensive front, better quarterback. Hey, let's end it on that note, you guys, and I'll take that. Uh, you guys, we really appreciate you for locking in and on the content for as long as you guys have. We appreciate you. Smash that like button. Make sure you guys are always subscribed to the Jacob Support YouTube channel. We have a lot of content cooking for you guys. Also, uh, John, I appreciate you, man, for always taking time for me, man. I know you're a busy guy. Make sure you guys check John out on Burge 365 with his partner in crime, uh, Jody Mack. And also make sure you guys check him out on jacobsports.com. He does a lot of writing on there. And also he does a lot of writing for si.com, sportsillustrated.com. Um, that's pretty much where we are, you guys. Your Eagles are 5-0, and no, and I'm sticking to it. And next week they have the New York Jets. John and I are going to be back on Thursday, same time at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, 5.30 p.m. Central. Uh, and then I believe that would be uh, 3.30 p.m. Pacific time and 4.30 Mountain time. So we got you guys covered, right? Just make sure you got your time zones all lined up. Well, you got mountain time on me. All yeah, right. yeah. I, listen, I struggle every day with my time zones, John. Uh, I'm, this, this is – I'm I'm literally fighting a battle every single I day. I still don't remember know what time, time zone I'm in right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, the curse of the gifted. When you're as good of a writer as you are, man, you're a world traveler. I'll tell you that. So, you guys, we appreciate you so much. Smash that like button. Make sure you guys are, are subscribed to Jacob Sports. This has been Football 24 7 with John McMullen, and I'm your guy, Tony. The show's the second. We'll see you Thursday. Take care, you guys. 